Brought to you by Almond Auctions, the worldwide leader in antique tractor auctions. Steve Guider has many unique and hard to find case and colt tractors at his place in Ohio, but the rarest of them all may be this 1966 case forklift. That's because this is the only one still around. Built in Sheffield, Alabama for the Case Corporation in 1966. Uh, one man still living says they didn't make 50 of them. So that's kind of how rare the thing is. This is the only one known to exist at this time. It was expensive, you know, it was $2,500 in 66. That was a lot of money. And he said they just didn't sell, couldn't sell them. And I think they went belly up from, from that fact, you know. Built on a 190 frame, this tractor is powered by a 12 horse Kohler engine. Handling a case forklift can be tricky. That's because the forks are mounted on what would usually be the back of the tractor, which means you're driving this tractor in reverse. It's kind of backwards and you have to, you have to do it a while to get used to it. It's, kind of, it's, it's nothing like one that I run in the, when I was working, you know, the newer, because it's kind of jerky, but after you run it a while, it, it works pretty good. After hearing rumors about this machine for several years, Steve was finally able to track down his one-of-a-kind case in Florida. Well, I'd heard there was through the case clubs, I belonged to both of them, that there was such a thing, but nobody would ever give you much information because they also want that truck. So I was at a show in East Tennessee, and a fella, I'd bought some stuff off of him in the conversation, mentioned the forklift. He eventually tracked it down for me. It was in New Comas, Florida. It was $1,200, because that's what he gave for it 10 years ago. He wanted his money back, and I said, oh, that's good. But he wouldn't let me have it, because he was still used to thing. I said, you're going to make me come clear back down here to get this 1,200 mile? And he said, if you want it, you're going to come back after it. So, so we did. A few months later, we went back down and got it, and restored it. And uh, the guy that I got it off of, he was an old car guy, and he was real happy I showed him my picture book of the other ones I'd done. He was happy that I was going to save the old girl. And, and this is something important, I think. I gave or, or sent him pictures when I was done with it of what it looked like. So he knew that I saved it. It didn't look like this. It ran good. I didn't touch the engine. And it still runs, does not smoke or use oil. And it was on propane. It was cobbled up on propane. But, uh, Restored the thing, got all the gas hoses off of it, and all the hoses run everywhere on it. And got it looking like it does today. The weight box that was on when I bought it was just a cage, and it was full of lead wheel weights, automobile wheel weights, balance weights. I left it in Florida and had my sheet metal guy that makes sheet metal stuff for me make this weight box off of the picture, and what I seen on the frame it sits on, I could tell where it was and where it came below the headlights everything so it's, it's exactly like the one that was on there originally and it looks a lot better than the cage that was on it before. Lots of classic tractors spend their days sitting in a museum but not Steve's forklift. He still uses it around his place for picking up all sorts of things. It says a thousand pounds. I got a picture of it with a 16 horse John Deere on the forks. It picked it up and hauled it away. Steve's case draws a crowd wherever he takes it, and people seem to have one common reaction when they see it. He made that up. No, I didn't. Here's, here's the literature on the thing. And after they look at the literature, then they say, okay. Because it, it's got some scars on it, and where it's been repaired, and when they repaired it, not so good, welding and so forth. And when I restored it, I, I had a notion to grind all those bad welds off, and then I thought, yeah, it's a little, you know, it's a little history on this thing. I think I'll just leave that alone. Right or wrong, that's how I did it. Steve is a true legend among case and cult collectors, and his collection has to be seen to be believed. It's obvious he has classic tractor fever. The evidence is right behind him. Right there. I got a building full of tractors, 60 plus tractors. It's uh, addiction, but it's a fun, fun hobby. Uh, met a lot of nice people. And uh, it's, just, it's, it's a good hobby. And when you're done, if you're playing golf, when you're done, you don't have nothing to show for it. When you're done with this, you got something to show for it. Yeah. 
nice collection that you can show people and other people enjoy.